Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, where today we have a very, very special video. Uh, one of the great privileges, I think, about running this channel is that we interact with some of you guys who have some extremely interesting things to say about how to solve Sudoku puzzles. Um, and those of you who follow the channel will know that Derek Neal is one of those people, and Derek showed us his technique, which he calls the slot machine, uh, in a video uh, a couple of weeks ago. You'll find it on the channel. I'll, I'll link it so that there's a card on the screen where you can click on it if you're not familiar with it. Um, but Derek wrote to me uh, a few days ago, uh, introducing me to this puzzle. Now, you can try this puzzle by clicking on the link under the under the software or under the video. Um, I'll be interested to know whether anyone out there uh, can solve this puzzle with alacrity. It is absolutely monstrous. Now one of the best ways to demonstrate just how difficult the Sudoku is is to put it into a solver that can rate it. So if I tick grader on this, let's see what it says. There we go, extreme grade 561, which is not a grade we've ever featured on the channel before to my knowledge anyway. Um, and if we just step through the solve, you'll see it's it's truly horrific. Um, you can't find any single digits. It has to find a pair across the middle. Its first thought is to find some X cycles that still don't give it a digit. Let's keep going. More X cycles. Still not got any digits. It's onto aligned pair exclusions, and it's still you can see it's just eliminating an eight from that square. Um, I finally get some digits um, you know, as we step through. It's it's using some really exotic stuff here to do. I mean, really exotic stuff to get anywhere. And although in the end it can, it does solve it using logic. It's clearly a monstrously hard puzzle. Now Derek has some ideas about how to use his famous slot machine um, as a way of get, of getting into a puzzle with this difficulty and this complexity. And I'm delighted to say that he's going to take you through uh, his thinking on how to solve the puzzle now. So next voice you hear will be Derek's. If you enjoy videos like this, please do support the channel. Um, do subscribe. Some of you may be in a position to support us on Patreon. It's massively appreciated. And we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Here's Derek. Um... So I'm going to get started here with uh, some basic slot machine logic. I happen to know that the ones are not that useful, so we're going to, because I've solved this puzzle before, so we're going to actually use the twos here. Um, so I'm going to go through here, here, uh, twos can go here, twos can go here and twos can go here. I think that's all the twos. Uh, and so we're actually going to start with this square here. Uh, and this is sort of an affirmation of something we already knew, but I think you'll find it interesting. So if this square is a two, then this square is a two, 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 and this square is a two. Uh, so yeah, there's a contradiction here. This square cannot be a two. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and eliminate it. And so this is the same stuff that you've seen from slot machines in the past. But what is interesting here is uh, I'm going to highlight a few other squares. And uh, yeah, uh, so this is a thinned swordfish, if I'm not mistaken. And you'll note it eliminates exactly the same two that I just eliminated using the slot machine. Uh, I find that interesting. I thought you would... Uh, be interested in seeing that here as well. Um, so that's all that I found with the twos in going through this. Uh, I'm going to jump to the fours now. And I'm going to do the same thing I did last time. I'm actually going to leave the notation for the twos in the grid. And I'm just going to put the notation for the fours into the grid kind of, uh, kind of on top of them. Let's go ahead and do that. And this is going to be important for the solve later on. Um, as you're going to see, as we go through here, four, 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 four. I think that's all the fours. So uh, like I did before, I'm actually going to uh, start in one of the cells that has only two possibilities because that tends to give you fewer possibilities to consider. I find it to be a good practice. So uh, we're going to assume that this four here is true. And if this four is true, then this four is true, and this four is true. And 
Unfortunately, that's as far as this particular chain is going to extend for us. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to leave the coloration that I just added in the grid the way that it currently is. And I'm now going to assume that uh, the opposite, that the other candidate is true. What if this one's true? Well, if this one's true, then this is true, and this is true, and this is true. And you know now the, the chain breaks. But this is where it's interesting. This is another example of what I believe to be a Nishio forcing chain uh, found using slot machine logic. So uh, here, actually, if you look at this square, the four that I currently have highlighted, uh, I'm sorry, this one here, the four that I have highlighted right now, this square sees both the blue four and the green four. That means it is eliminated in both paths. And that means, in turn, that we can eliminate this square as a possibility. And actually, the same thing is true of this square. It sees both the blue square and the green square. And so this also cannot be a four. And so, uh, OK, so there's another slot machine in this puzzle, which is on sixes. And I'm going to go ahead and move to that one now. Uh, and just like before, I'm going to go ahead and enter the notation for the slot machine on sixes right on top of the notation that I had for uh, the slot machines on twos and fours. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. There could be sixes here, can be sixes here, can be sixes here, here, here. and here. Okay, I think that's all the sixes. So uh, with that notation in the grid, I'm now going to pick a place where there are two sixes as a starting point. So we're going to come over here. Um, let me change the colors real quick again. Okay, uh, so I'm going to start with the assumption that this one is a six. So if this is a six, then this is a six, and this is a six. Uh, and unwinding it the other direction, that would also mean that this is a 6. And that's as far as we get with this particular chain. Now, what about the other one? So let's start with this one and assume that this is a 6. Well, if this is a 6, then this is a 6. And this is a 6. And this is a 6. Uh, <clears throat> so now that we've done that, we can see that the same sort of logic actually applies here. This square in the upper right hand corner can see both the green six and the blue six. And so it can be eliminated. And then uh, this square here as well can see both the green six and the blue six. And we can eliminate that one also. Let me just uh, go ahead and clean up my highlights now. Now, so this is all well and good. It's sort of a proof of concept of what I showed you earlier, but it's not the, the really new interesting thing. The, the thing that I think is most interesting that I came up with is what I'm going to call a linked slot machine. And now uh, what I'd like to draw your attention to here is I've left the notation for these slot machines in the grid quite deliberately. And what you're going to see is that there's a lot of places where there's both a 2 and a 6 in the grid. So here's a 2, 6, here's a 2, 6, here's a 2, 6, here's a 2, 6, here's a 2, 6. Uh, incidentally, this 2, 6 that you see in this area here, um, this is a pair, a 2, 6 pair. They're the only two possibilities for those numbers in that row. Um, but the interesting thing about this is we know that there's a slot machine on 6s. We know that there's a slot machine on 2s. And we know that the behavior of the slot machine is that once you insert information into it, that information ripples around the grid uh, in this forcing pattern. Well, what that means is that this square that I've highlighted, the one that is both a 2 and a 6 as a current possibility, making an assumption about this square is actually going to affect both the slot machine on 6s and the slot machine on 2s. And you can unroll both of them, and I'm going to use coloration to do this. Um, and it, it's very interesting what winds up happening. So if we assume that this is a 6, for example, uh, well, that means this is a 6. That means this is a 6, that means this is a 6, that means this is a 6, and that means this is a 6. The interesting part of this, though, is that uh, making this a 6 affected one of the other parts, one of the areas later on, 
where the twos could possibly go. And so if we assume this is a six, well, that also means it can't be a two. And so that means one of these two has to be a two. And that is going to set off a ripple effect in the slot machine on twos. And so that means that this actually has to be a two, this actually has to be a two, and this has to be a two. But now we have a problem because this square has to be both a six and a two in this line of logic. And it, it can't be both. It can't be both a two and a six at the same time. So because of that, our original assumption that this square was a six cannot be true. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and eliminate the six from it. And what that means is that this is actually a six. And now if you get that this is a six, uh, then straightforward regular Sudoku rules actually place an eight uh, here in this square. Um, and this gives you a little bit of information to work with. There's actually a, a bit of normal Sudoku that you can do now uh, with just traditional techniques that will get you a little bit further. Um, not a huge amount though, and this is actually where I got stuck the worst on this particular puzzle. Um, is this section right here. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here so it doesn't get too long for, for my software. Uh, and I'm also going to go ahead and populate the rest of this with notation and get to the point where I got stuck. And then I will resume my little walkthrough uh, from there. All right, and I'm back. So uh, <clears throat> this is the place where I got stuck. Uh, and I'm sorry for filling in all of the possible candidates, but I was stuck here for quite a while uh, and got fairly desperate. Um, so it's possible that there's a, a few more pencil marks and things that you can make, but this is very close to the, the position. And uh, for me, what the key was in order to progress here was uh, noticing that this square here was very interesting. Um, and so the I wanted to continue this process of sort of uh, setting off these chain reactions with the slot machine and looking for contradictions with the ways that they interact with other chains. And what I noticed here is that uh, actually this cell contains a four, so it's part of the slot machine on fours. And that means changing it is going to set off a ripple effect on fours throughout the grid. Uh, but it's also, if this cell was not a four, then there would be a fairly useful looking triple in this column that it's in. Uh, there would be a 372237 seven, seven, triple. Um, and so I set out to prove that this cell could not be a four. I did that by assuming it was a four and following the chain that it then set off. Now, uh, I'm going to disappoint you a little bit and uh, be a little hand wavy about this. The chain in question is followable by a human. It is completely forcing. Um, and it unfortunately is 20 or 30 moves long before you get to a contradiction. Uh, and it is it is a mess. Um, so I'm not gonna walk you through that chain because there are some other examples of me doing this later on that I think are, are better examples and I will show you those. But for now, um, just take me at my word, you can eliminate this uh, as being a four. Um, and once you do that, it has a lot of ramifications. It means that this is a four, this now has to be a nine. It's the only place that a nine can go. Um, nines are eliminated from these two cells, which means that this is a nine. Um, a four is eliminated from is eliminated from here. This can no longer be a nine. This well, that could never be a, a nine. How did I get this screwed up? Uh, sorry, I had my pencil mark notations somewhat weird. Uh, there's now a 3-7 pair here, um, so that means that this has to be a 5. Um, the fact that this has to be a 5 eliminates some possible 5s from other areas. Let's do that real quick. Um, the fact that this is a triple means we can eliminate that 3, that 3, that 7 that two, that seven, that two. Uh, and eliminating the twos from here means that this actually has to be a two, um, which that also means that this cannot any longer be a two. 
Um, so we've made some good progress. We've placed several numbers, uh, a five, a nine, a two, a four, a nine. We've eliminated a bunch of pencil marks. But unfortunately, at this point, the puzzle still did not collapse. Um, but at this point, I noticed something pretty interesting. I noticed this chain here. Um, so this short chain, one, three, three, seven, three, seven, um, is connected to a linked slot machine. So this, uh, because it, start, it has a one in it, and here, uh, the ones are a slot machine and the fours are a slot machine. Now, the ones haven't been terribly useful so far, but the fours have been pretty good at chaining. So, uh, and this is going to set off a chain on ones, it's going to set off a chain on fours, and it's going to set off this little chain that I noticed. So that seemed like a good place to guess something. So uh, to start trying to look for a chain. So here, I'm going to guess that this cell is a one. Uh, and if we do that, uh, it has a bunch of ramifications. It means that this cell is a one, um, but it also means this cell is not a four. If the cell is not a four, well, there's only one other place for a four here. That means this is a four. If this is a four, that means this is a four. 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 And so our attempt to set off a chain reaction has been successful. Uh, and then it also sets off this chain. So if this is a three, then this is a seven. And that means that this is a three. And actually here, we've already hit our contradiction. Because here in the lower left-hand corner, there's only two possible places a three can go. It can either go here or it can go here. Um, but we've just proven it can't go here. We've just placed a three in that column. And we've proven it can't go here because we just demonstrated that that was a four. Um, and so this strategy of unwinding the slot machines, looking for contradictions, and coloring each number the same color, uh, I think is a useful, a useful sort of approach to this. Um, it's different from a strategy like simple coloring or something, in that in simple coloring, you're looking at binary states, uh, whether something can be on or off, and you have two colors for those. Here, I'm just trying to keep track of chains on individual numbers by highlighting what color those individual numbers are, the same way as the bidirectional slot machines from earlier, or even just like a single slot machine. I'm just using it to sort of keep track. Anyways, uh, that means this actually can't be a one, which means that this is a four, and I felt really good about finding that one. Um, but unfortunately, it doesn't actually give us all that much. Um, let me see here. Means that this is a four. Means that this is not a four. That means uh, we have a pair of pointing eights here now. Uh, so these are not eights. Uh, there's a pair of pointing sevens down here. I just noticed it means that these are not sevens. So that's potentially useful. Uh, two, six, three, seven, four, four, fours. I think that is unfortunately all we get out of that piece of logic. And again, the puzzle does not collapse. It needs one final piece of logic before it becomes uh, something more manageable. And for me, the key insight here was noticing that now that we've eliminated this square from being a one, the ones which previously were not chaining very well are now chaining much, much better. So for example, if we assume that this square is a four, that means that this square is a four, this, uh, sorry, is a one, this square is a one, uh, and this square is a one. Um, and so, the ones all of a sudden look like they might be more fruitful. But what I want is a way to set off multiple slot machines at the same time and maybe have some other chains involved in that too. So that's what I was looking for. And what I noticed was that here uh, in this square, we have this, uh, this one, that's a slot machine on ones. And in this square, we have a six and they're kind of linked in this square, which has a one and a five. So if we assume that this square is a five, that's going to mean that this square is a one because it's the only place left for a one, but it also means this square is going to be a six. And it also means that it's going to fix the rest of this, like the five here is going to make this a seven, this a three. Um, so it's going to set off another chain in parallel. So again, this looked like a good square to investigate.
So uh, if we assume that this is a five, well, that means that this is a one, and that means that this is a one, and that's useful. And the six is here, that means this is a six, and that means this is a six. And uh, one of the interesting things about that is that this is a two six pair. So if that's a six, well, this must be a two, um, which I guess I'm gonna color gray. And now, actually, let's hold off on that um, because what you're gonna see now is there's only one place a four can go down here now. Uh, we took one of them up with this one, so now this has to be a four, it means this has to be a four. That means this up here has to be a nine, um, which I'm gonna color purple, I guess. So this ha now has to be a nine, which is interesting. Um, these actually can't be a nine. Uh, there's only one place left that can be a nine, and that's right here. This has to be a nine. Which, uh, again, is kind of interesting. There's this three seven chain that's still going on down here. Um, now that this is a nine, this square has to be an eight. Uh, do we have any colors left? I guess I'll color it black uh, just for the sake of this. This square has to be an eight. And now this square, well, we just proved that there's a six. We just proved that there's a four. We just proved that there's an eight. We just proved that there's a nine. Nothing can go in this square. Therefore, we have ourselves a contradiction. Uh, this square, this cannot be possible, and that means this cannot be a five. And finally, we say this square must be a one, and that means this has to be a three, this has to be a seven, this has to be a five, uh, this cannot be a one, this is a five, six pair, so now this has to be an eight, um, this has to be a seven, uh, this has to be a one. Um, and anyways, uh, at this point, the whole puzzle collapses and you're able to solve the rest of it using uh, fairly normal basic Sudoku techniques. Um, so I hope that this was uh, of interest to you. Um, I hope that you enjoyed watching this and some of the unique logic that it required to solve. I hope you didn't get too badly stuck on this puzzle yourself. Uh, and, you know, in general, uh, I look forward to hopefully corresponding with you some more in the future about some of these interesting ideas.